everyone. It's four o'clock and I now call to order this meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. Um, if Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit could please come forward. Good evening, gentlemen. Or good afternoon, I should say. So before we get started, I understand that item M7 has been pulled from our agenda for this afternoon? Yes, that was our recommendation uh, based on some uh, MBE issues that we'd like to address more forward before we bring our Okay. And I understand um, there are issues or um, items we need to resolve with regards to item M1 as well and would ask if you had wanted to consider moving that from the agenda as well because there's some unresolved concerns of the curriculum committee. Well, let me, let me just address what I can. Um, and I'll refer the committee to policy 'm so committee members to refresh your memories and my own um, at our last meeting we voted as a full board to ask the curriculum committee to consider this particular contract of JMI 60419 it's my understanding that the curriculum committee asked requested a modified um, recommendation and that that recommendation be brought forth to the committee presumably and then to the full board to my knowledge that has not occurred so I would ask for a motion to consider um, action on this particular agenda item given the fact that the recommendation of the curriculum committee has not been carried forth <coughs> and what would be your specific motion Ms. Rowe This isn't a usual situation, so I guess I'm wondering if we send something to a committee, that committee should finish their work and it should come back to us in the form that that committee voted on. Are you saying that that committee passed something that's not in front of us? I'm confused, I suppose, as to precisely what's happened. Correct. So it's my interest to, that we fulfilled the, the expectations of the curriculum committee and that they expected a revised contract to come to us. That has not occurred. And what we have on our agenda is the original that the curriculum committee voted to amend, which has not yet happened. I'd so like to we, ask if Dr. McComas could come and maybe share, set some uh, light on this. Well, and also I'd maybe suggest that the board consult its counsel as to its um, ability to modify the contract based on the language that I've cited. We shouldn't, okay, if that was gonna happen, shouldn't that have happened in the context of curriculum committee? Dr. McComas. So I think one of the things I'd like to clarify is curriculum committee does not, uh, is not contracts committee. So curriculum's committee is to look at the intention and the purpose of this, uh, which we did discuss 
why do we need a math audit? Why is it that we're asking what are the details involved in the process of the math audit um, and the timeline? So first I'd like to clarify that that curriculum committee is not the, the contract uh, or procurement process. Um, what the committee recommended was um, where they left moving the need for the audit forward, they recommended to the full board to accept, and I'm quoting Ms. Causey's recommendation uh, from the curriculum committee, <clears throat> recommend to the full board to accept the contract with the staff bringing it out for one year of defined funding and then elevate it at six months or eight months down the road to modify to extend the funding for additional years if in fact that process is bringing value or if this program is really helping the system. And it was my understanding that that would be brought back to the full board with modified terms, those terms being the duration of the contract and the purchasing authority. And am I correct that that has not yet occurred? I don't believe it's consistent with this policy, and that's why I'd like legal guidance on this point. Okay. Mr. Nussbaum? What's the policy number? 3210 Roman numeral 5, paragraphs a and B. question I mean so the, the board has the right to approve or not approve a, a contract what, what I don't understand well, you want my qu my question is I believe the board wants to amend or modify the contract recommendation and I'm not clear as to my are the staff's authority to do that right. if, if what the board is saying is that the contract's not going to be approved unless it's changed to meet certain requirements that the board wants, then the board has the right to, to not award the contract. Correct. And is that what, but I'm not sure that's what the board is requesting. Well, I, that's what I don't know. I mean, I don't know where we are with. with so what, Andy, what do we need to do? Vote down this contract and have the modified one to work in the one brought back for 17, 17? I think it also has to do with how it was advertised, correct? Correct. So in, in terms of how it was advertised, I think that is the legal question that's on the table. Can this, this um, was advertised in a certain way with certain terms. And so now we have those who have then accepted those terms and who, right, we uh, who are al aligned with that. So the question is, can you then change the terms given that that's not how it was advertised? Am correct. I correct in that? Exactly. Thank you for that clarification. So then this committee will vote to as to whether or not to recommend for approval to the full board the contract as it stands. Correct. Because so. it seems that the curriculum committee agreed with the content of having an, an audit, <clears throat> but in terms of it sounds like to me that the curriculum committee didn't agree to the length of the term and the length, but you have to correct me if I'm wrong there because you were there and I wasn't, but that's my understanding. And if can this then committee change the terms, would that pose a legal problem for the school system? And my only addition to this, which I didn't get a chance to say in the curriculum committee, uh, at least I don't recall, is that the way the scope of work is laid out for this, uh, I believe we could effectively do what the curriculum committee and the board has asked because the scope of work is laid out in phases. And if at the end of the first phase we chose not to continue with the contract, mm -hmm. that, that is an option for us. Uh, without um, the board failing to support um, what we need to do to be able to assess our, our curriculum and provide support to our schools and our teachers. Thank you. Mr. Sarris, was there any additional information to provide on this item? No, I think that's, those were my only questions. Ms. Rowe, did you have a question? So I guess what I'm, I need clarification. So I think what the curriculum committee was expecting, if I'm right about this, is that we would get a contract reflective of the term that they want 
And what you're saying is that the way the contract is written right now, we could effectively give them what they want because at some point in the future, we can simply not move forward. This but I think one of the concerns I have from the standpoint of procurements is I don't like the idea of getting into a habit of passing contracts and passing spending authorities <coughs> with some idea that now the board has to keep track of these things and pull it back into the committee. I would rather approve the spending authority that we really want to approve rather than approve something greater than what we want to approve and then be setting this pattern of approving spending authorities that are more than what we want because it's true with any contract practically we could pull it back and end it before the term. So I guess my question is, yeah. you see where I'm going with this? So the way this evaluation is set up, it's naturally set up in stages. Frankly, if at the conclusion of the first stage of this, the evaluation of the alignment of the curriculum, it's evident that there's substantial deviations or deficits in the alignment of the curriculum, it makes no sense to go forward from that point. None, because first we have to resolve the alignment issues. Going in and making observations of classrooms on a, a curriculum that you already know isn't aligned would not be helpful. It's an outer order of assembly. So we would naturally have to delay those things if there is substantial deviation. It is set up in stages such that it makes sense to stop at certain points based on what you learn. On the other hand, if one finds that the curriculum is adequately aligned, then the question becomes, well, is there an issue in implementation? And then you gotta look at whether or not teachers are implementing the curriculum as it's designed. That's the second stage of this that would make sense then to do once the curriculum alignment is determined. That was advertised as a package, but it naturally has breakpoints in the, in the articulation of that as you move forward. And I would also say during those breakpoints, what could reasonably happen if you're looking at setting controls in the, in the meantime would be to have a report to the curriculum committee on what happened with phase one and does the curriculum committee need to then make a recommendation to suspend it um, if, it, if need be um, after the end of phase one. There could be natural controls that could be put into place to make sure that it doesn't continue without the board's um, authority or without the board's understanding. Right, and if I may add um, to Ms. White's point on that, it, we would absolutely be discussing this in curriculum committee as we would in the fall when we do our annual achievement report because if you go back to our achievement report this September, we identified this as one of our strategic paths forward um, and so that would be, an, uh, again, these would be normal embedded uh, report opportunities in both the curriculum committee and to the full board along with achievement because this is one of our strategic attempts to get at what is some of the underlying root causes of low math achievement. And these are items that were discussed and may need to continue to be discussed at the curriculum committee. They absolutely so would be is what I'm saying. I'm in to move us forward. I would um, ask my committee members if you would consider a motion to move this forward to the full board with no recommendation from the committee. From building and contracts committee. So I'm, I didn't hear the first part of that. I would ask if um, you would consider a motion to move this forward to the full board with no recommendation from the building and contracts committee. Um, I'm willing to consider that motion, but I do have a couple additional questions. Ms. Rowe? Um, so, one of the questions I have is the department of John Hopkins University that is doing this audit, is this the same department that has done the stat audit in the past? And is this the same department that has already done substantial research for Dreambox? Because I want to avoid if we're doing an independent audit, we want truly independent results, and I want to avoid conflicts of interest in the results. Help me understand the conflict of interest in the result. Well, because, for instance, if you have somebody who's done substantial research in something like Dreambox, and Dreambox is part of our math curriculum or instructional materials, and they have 
found certain findings in their initial research, it's going to be very difficult for them to find differently in this situation. So there's already a bias to find consistent with previous research results, and I'd like to know if the, or the part. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not following that. As someone that's a professional researcher and has made a career of that, as a professional evaluator, um, you know, Hopkins as an institution bases its credibility on the independence of their results. Now, I would understand if Dreambox had done the evaluation, then I would say, oh yeah, well they've got a vested interest in the outcome. Well, there is a researcher there that did research specifically on Dreambox, not for us. But again, they're not vested in the outcome. Where conflicts of interest tend to come into place when there's a vested interest in the outcome of the result. I, I fail to understand. I think that sounds like you're questioning the integrity of Johns Hopkins, and that sounds to me like libel. Yeah, I would. I, I would, I would be very careful. And, 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 I mean, it's, I'm not it questioning sounds, the board. That, My that question. sounds like something that is that could be funny, but it really isn't. And I would, um, I, I do believe, as um, superintendent, it is my responsibility to um, caution us with some of the things that um, we say. We want to be careful in terms of disparaging any company or any um, uh, university, particularly Johns Hopkins University, their research institution. I don't think that they would put their uh, reputation on the line for Baltimore County Public Schools, given that they do worldwide research. But I do think that we have to be careful with disparaging the university and disparaging oh. or, cre or, or, um, or diminishing their credibility um, without evidence or without oh. support. I'm not diminishing their credibility, and as my husband's alma mater, I'm sure he wouldn't want me to do that. But my question is, there are people have biases, and I want to know, is the same individuals who did these, this research the ones doing our math audit? I believe some of the people who were engaged in the uh, evaluation of uh, STAT would also be mm -hmm. engaged in this. I do not believe that the entire team would be the same. So. I would like to add as well, um, first I'd like to clarify that Dreambox is not our curriculum. It is a resource that our teachers use. We spent time at the curriculum committee, Mr. McMillian uh, may recall, um, showing people what, what our curriculum is so that we can clarify what it is and what it isn't um, and where the scope of this work falls. This is about the work, the curriculum that our teachers write for our teachers um, in alignment with the state standards. Um, and so one, I, I want to clarify that. Second, I also want to um, point out is my understanding, and uh, Dr. Brown, please correct me if I'm wrong, the particular part about digging, the first phase is really outsourced to the new teacher project from Johns Hopkins anyway. So they are a completely different group of people as well. So I hope to clarify those two things. Because I'd like to see that if we're doing independent audits and if we're doing research that are coming back with results, I'd like to see different groups doing the research. Most companies, when they're doing research, they don't generally use the same research company for every aspect of their research. And the reason is because researchers should confirm the results of the previous research with more research but from different researchers. As and so one, if Ms. you're Rock. telling me that you've checked and there's not a conflict of interest and you feel certain that that's the case, but I feel that as an elected official, it's my responsibility to ask the question. I'm not disparaging Johns Hopkins in any way. And as this contract is of particular interest to the full board, board I'm going to move us along so that this discussion can continue with the full board. Thank, Thank you. you for your input and feedback. I'll save the, the motion for the end when we consider all contracts before us. Okay. Next we have our next item for consideration. Do you want to do this one? Or do you want yeah, to let me do it. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. The next item is for insulation uh, and remove old insulation, replace it with new insulation. I just want to give you a little bit of background on that. Uh, as a result of extreme rainy season last year, 
and with the installation of air conditioning in number of schools that were not air conditioned before, uh, we have noticed uh, humidity levels larger than what we should. So we are providing insulation of chill water piping in our effort to manage the humidity. And it seems like a large number, but it is going to be used for several schools. The first batch of schools, which is about 15 schools, will cost $369,000. We'll complete this work before the start of air conditioning season and then come back next year after the air conditioning stopped and do remaining portion of the uh, insulation of chilled water piping. Thank you. Board members, any questions regarding this contract? Ms. Rowe? Can you tell me at the schools where we're doing this work, um, was there, is this, as a, is this a result of um, like repairs? So was there mold remediation and other things done for some of these schools? Because I'm still hearing about Parkville Middle School. Yeah, there are some schools that had mold remediation and this is part of our management of humidity. 15 schools do include Parkville Middle School. It does include Parkville Middle School, but if you want, I can name all of them. Glenmore, Gunpowder Elementary, Hawthorne, Catonsville Middle School, Catonsville High School, Eastern Votech, Elmwood Elementary School, Millbrook Elementary School, Northwest Academy, Woodlawn Middle School, Battle Monument, Sparrows Point High School, Chesapeake High School, Parkville Middle School, and Deep Creek Middle School. So the humidity issues are not only related to one school. There are other schools that have the same concern. And this is part of our mitigation strategy for all the schools where humidity needs to be managed. And it, it is more important now because of the air conditioning installation. So this is the solution to the problem? It is because, not a total solution. It is okay. one of the strategy to handle that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mr. McMillian. I'd just like to say, having taught school at Chesapeake High School for 25 years, it was definitely a humidity issue. And I mean, if there's any way that you can correct that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no further questions. Next item. Next item, MBU 508. Dash one nine cut sheet paper. This is a new competitively bid cooperative contract for the purchase of letter and legal size paper for schools and offices. Approval is requested for a one year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of one point four million dollars. Okay. Questions? No. Thank you. Next item. Next contract, KSH30719, is for preventive maintenance to chillers. This is the maintenance that we do in the springtime and fall time, as recommended by the manufacturer. Again, it seems like a large number of $10.5 million, but this is for five-year time frame, and the two million or so per year is for 212 chillers. So when you, you know, come down to per capita cost, is about $10,000 for two rounds of maintenance and sometimes some repairs included in there. Are we increasing our maintenance on this equipment or would you say we're um, maintaining the same level of service that we have been just? This has two parts to it. One is the preventive maintenance, which is the larger part. Mm -hmm. That is the same whether it's new or old but sometimes older equipment need more repairs to it. So if we cannot do it in-house, we use this contract to do that. Okay. In terms of preventive maintenance, I know this committee has asked in the past if increasing that would prolong the lifespan of the equipment. So I'm curious to know if this um, would allow for increasing overall preventive maintenance. That, that's a good authority. question. It depends on the piece of equipment. This particular piece of equipment uh, has good level of preventive maintenance, but it is not the same story for every other piece of equipment. And we are looking for ways to improve that. So it's in overall, not specific to this contract, yeah. are we increasing our preventive maintenance overall yes. in order yes. to avoid some, some costly repairs or 
issues down the road. I think the board has in the past expressed interest in adequately funding yeah. the preventive maintenance piece so as to avoid um, prolonged And the answer costs. is yes, we are doing it by adding contracts and we are doing it by reorganizing ex existing positions. So we have been able to create five preventive maintenance technician for five different regions and that is our, that is uh, a super, at the direction of superintendent, we have been able to get those positions and we are uh, trying to improve our preventive maintenance efforts. Thank you. Other questions? No? Okay. The next contract, MBU 518-19 is for replacement at, replacement of bowler uh, uh, at Woodmore Elementary School. The bowlers are old and it's one of the capital projects, systemic project, and it's going to be replaced with two energy efficient bowlers. The old bowlers have lived their useful life and they need to be replaced. Okay. Questions? No questions. No? Next item. Next item, JMI 60119 uh, is for the electrical package for the new school, Berkshire Elementary School. Board had approved uh, several contracts in the meeting of uh, January 8th, which included 10 different packages. Mm -hmm. This package was incomplete at that time, and now it is. this is the electrical package. All the paperwork is complete, and we are requesting for board's approval. Questions? Ms. Rowe? Are we on schedule with this project? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. Next, next item we pulled. Yeah, I know, I know the next to next is MBU 516-19, which is classroom conversion at Overly High School. Uh, this is a classroom which is being converted at Overly to start a uh, dental assistant program, and the work is being done under a grant. Uh, we have received five bids, and the lowest bid is uh, 258675 um, The work will include a air compressor system, seven dental stations, and renovating the existing classroom area. Great. Questions? I'm just Mr. curious. Brilliant. This is for one classroom? Uh, yes, one classroom and associated closer area to that classroom. Okay. Ms. Rowe? Any other questions? Ms. Rowe? I'm very curious about this from a curriculum standpoint and not a contract standpoint. I'd like to request staff to uh, tell us what this is all about in our weekly update. Thank you. Next item, please. The next contract, if I got it right, MWE 80619. Am I on the right place? Yes. Uh -huh. The next two contracts are really board's approval for site. One site is for Northeast Area Middle School, and the other site is at Northeast Area School at Ridge Road. In the past, both of these sites are board owned and in the past, we did not need board's approval for sites that were board owned. Uh, the process has changed and now state requires that board approve the site even if they own the site. So this approval is for requesting the site to build a school on their site. Ms. Rao? So is this what I heard in the last IAC meeting or the one before that where they turn something down for these two schools because of site approval. This is us doing the site approval now. They have not turned down any project. They talked about it. Yeah. I didn't fully understand what they meant. Yeah. Perhaps they were talking about something else. <coughs> they have not they haven't even gotten to that uh, that line there for uh, you know they're talking about funding. Site approval uh, is a routine process. So there must be something else. I thought they deferred it for lack of board approval or something like that. No. You would know it because they give different grades during the stage of the design. And this is just part of the routine site approval process. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you. And item M10. So I think that's. That's, that's the it, I think. site the approval for Ridge Road. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about that approval? The Ridge Road. So item M9 was to consider the site approval for the new Northeast Middle School at 9. M10 is for site approval for the Northeast Area Elementary at Ridge Road. Any other questions about those? No? Hearing none. Do I have a motion to forward to the full board for approval items M2 through M6 and items M8 through M10? Motion. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Do I have a motion for item M1 to forward to the full board without a recommendation? Motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Great. So we are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks.